Hello, welcome back to Pixelmon. We will waste no time. I shall now be spinning the wheel of comment suggestions on the last episode to determine what one thing I have to use on my gym team for the water type gym. Of course, on this video, you can do the same thing for the electric flying type gym coming up next. Those are the rules there. You can leave a comment telling me to use a thing. It's getting harder with the dual typing gyms. Back to this wheel though, I was pleasantly surprised by all these suggestions. I would actually be happy with using any of these. Shockingly, there's nothing completely useless to screw me over. Everything here can actually do some work. Drum roll, please. Mil tank. All right, congrats, Dan. It looks like I will be squirting milk in the eyes of my opponents. I can work with that for sure. It isn't hindered by typing. It's got some good bulk, good coverage moves. Maybe Thunder Punch on there could be good. Just take a bunch of Snorlax's attack and tankiness away and put it into speed and you have Mil tank. Well, cool. I mean it, though, when I say anything here could have been fun to build up. Blaze again, like I joked about a Power Herb Solar Beam set, and then maybe Acrobatics after using the item to help with Ludicolo or something. Or just blow through things with strong fighting moves, or maybe a Sunny Day Solar Beam thing, weaken their water moves and counter the rain if they bring a rain team, which would make sense. The Ditto would be fun to scout a move set. The Pikachu really wouldn't be all that bad. The typing is good, and I did pick up a Light Ball recently to double its attack. Uh, Hitmonlee, Cradilly, yeah, why not? I wouldn't be able to get a Storm Drain one, because that'd be too difficult. It is the hidden ability, but still a good Pokemon. Also, a reminder that I can do whatever I want with the thing that is chosen on the wheel. Some people included a certain ability or move set in their comment, which you can certainly do if you just want to give me ideas, but I wouldn't be forced to do that. Finally, the one I didn't mention, Metagross is so damn good, I'm thinking I'm gonna use it anyway, just throw him on the team in addition to the mill tank that we have to use. So I'm a little glad it didn't land on Metagross, because then this would seem super rigged. Well, on with the team preparation. One little thing I'll actually do off the start here is give a little base tour, because it was requested on the previous episode, and I never really talked about the base at all. The focus has always been on building the team and taking on the gym each time, but I can run through what I'm working with here. It's not very pretty, it just started out as a cave that I randomly teleported into, and just started digging out more and more as I felt I needed more things. Oh yeah, and this clip isn't recorded in order. You might notice some of that sometimes. I'm actually going to take on the gym soon, but that shouldn't matter at all. I just try to make these episodes flow in a way that makes sense, even if the clips are shuffled around a bit. Well, one of the first things I built was this big apricorn farm. You need these things for making Pokeballs. You're allowed to farm up to 400 blocks on the server, so of course I was like, ha I'll make mine 396 blocks. And that's what this is. I made it for Dusk Balls, Ultra Balls, and Quick Balls. The other colors I don't really care about. But I farmed it like five times ages ago, and then immediately realized I didn't need a farm this large because I'm already set for life. If someone wants to world edit this farm down to like a quarter of the size, that'd be fine with me. Anyway, there's that. Uh, back here is this little Pokeball crafting station. These automatic anvils are a lifesaver. No more goddamn hammering out Pokeball discs like in the old version. That was always obnoxious. Over on the other side, just a bunch of blocks and junk stored in there. On this side over here, just some unsorted mob drops, good tools, and some more interesting stuff. A bunch of Pixelmon items all sorted out. These are what I consider to be my useful TMs that I've picked up. Good TMs I may actually use. And then my HM collection at the bottom. That's a move token to teach any move, very valuable. Some healing stuff here and rare candies. Uh, mail collection, one of each, which is kind of useless. Uh, machines, fossils, evolution stuff. And a bunch of useful held items, choice items, leftovers, orbs, all the good stuff. All the berries, and berries continued in the floor. You can tell my base tour is basically just all the loot I've collected, because I don't have much of a base, just a hole in the ground. The last of the items are back here, some breeding and training items. Pretty valuable stuff on the server. And type boosting items, and all the type boosting gems. Well, not quite all of them yet. Then an ass load of extra berries, mainly Greppa berries because Chansey drops them. They come in handy for raising happiness though. And finally a bunch of the TMs I've deemed to be not very useful. I should actually sell these back to the store and earn some decent money. Nice. And down there are the extra HMs. Alright, enough storage. That's all cobble and junk back there. The only other part of my base, really, is the breeding area. Oh, and that door back there doesn't go anywhere. It's just the old pathway I had up here before I finally realized, why am I wasting my time opening and closing these doors and going around? How about I just dig a tunnel straight up there? So that is what I did. No more doors. Maybe I should fill that in or do something about it. Oh well. Since I'm often waiting for things to breed, I did fancify all these walls here. That's why I mentioned this base tour part is actually being recorded later out of order. You might notice in some clips coming up that this breeding area is not so fancy. 
But yeah, there you have the four breeding areas. The ranch block does need to see the sky, hence those big holes above them. I didn't need to dig the whole thing out, only about a 5v5 works so that the Pokemon actually spawn in here and I can right click them. And if we head back to the entrance, that staircase leads to the surface, or I can just fly straight up out of this big hole. And that's that, that's pretty much the base. Oh, I could mention that this first breeding area does have fancy powered floors. So when I'm breeding electric types, I can use the lit redstone lamps, which is the highest tier of environment for them. Anyway, that's that. I may make small improvements over time, but this is my hole in the ground. Back to more chronological gameplay. I've started breeding for a female Trico here. I'm thinking Sceptile would be fun to use. I'm also farming pumpkins because it's a good environment block for breeding grass types better than planting wheat every time. But what I'm really excited about is this 5 IV Dratini I bought. It has every IV perfect except attack, so it's great for breeding a special attacker. I did say after I found that Destiny Knot from a boss last time, I would try to buy some 5 IV Pokemon off the auction and start breeding it a bunch to get some more 5 IVs in different egg groups. The Destiny Knot passes down 5 random IVs from both parents, so there's a lot of trial and error until you get a good one. You start by breeding a 5 IV with a no IV, then maybe get like a 5 IV and a 2 IV that you hatch, and uh, keep going up and rolling the dice until you eventually land on another 5 IV. I still won't stress too much about IVs, but if I can get a few perfect stats on each of my gym team mods, that would be cool. Now I bought a second 5 IV Dratini too. This one has everything but special attack, so if I want to breed physical attackers, this one will be the starting point. I am now deep into the chain breeding. The Trico line is in the dragon egg group, which makes this easy. I'm at a point where I have a female 5 IV Grovile breeding with the 5 IV Dratini. I also ended up getting some more 5 IV mons here. Not the nature I want to use on the gym team, and I'm not passing down all the moves yet either. Tons of 4 IV rejects, which is the most common result, of course. I'll end up selling some of these for cheap or tossing them out, but it's going good. Hey, say hello to the Safari for the first time. This is a place where you can pay some of your balance every few minutes to walk around in all the biomes, and there are spawners spawning a bunch of stuff for easy catching. I want to check out the Mesa to see if Smeargle is spawned in here. That is where it normally spawns, but I kind of doubt it'll be in here. It is a rare spawn. Some awkward situations have arisen where I need to catch a Smeargle to do one of the things I want to do for the team. I guess I can explain. Here's the dealio. I want Freeze Dry on something I bring to the gym. Freeze Dry is a nice move that is also super effective on water types instead of being resisted. I want freeze dry because it has such great coverage for a water gym. With it, I don't think I can lose, and I'm not really seeing a smear goal in here, and that's what I thought though. I'll just wander and come back in a bit. Now they will obviously be prepared with checks to grass and electric type moves. Things like Kingdra and Ludicolo are great at being neutral to both. And all the water ground types like Quagsire, Swampert, Whiskash, and so on, those are immune to electric, but quad weak to grass. So I don't know if they'll want one of those to check electric, but what do all those have in common? Everything I just listed, they are all quad weak to freeze dry. The dragon, grass, ground, all weak to ice. It will just oko all of them. So how can I easily get freeze dry? Cryogonal was one of my original picks. Sadly, it has the Gen 5 stats. It got an HP and defense buff in Gen 6, but I still thought it'd be fun to run a bulky acid armor set with Recover, patch up my defense, and freeze dry everything. It would have been fun. Sadly, it learns freeze dry at level 50. This is a 45 cap gym, which is normally no problem. Just pass it down with breeding. But I was like, oh, wait a minute. Cryogonal is genderless, meaning I have to breed it with Ditto, meaning I cannot pass down level up moves. Crap. Moving on to Glalie. It would have been easy to breed for a decent Snorunt and learn Freeze Dry at level 42. It can learn other things like Hail and Ice Dry on the way up. I thought Hail might be fun to pair it with the Ice Body, but mainly I wanted it if they set up the Rain. It makes sense to have a Rain team and a Water Gym boosting water moves, and going for Hail might allow me to outspeed a Swift Swim, Ludicolo, or Kingdra on the next turn and Freeze Dry those things. Perfect, right? I'll use Glalie. Well, no, there's that Pixelmon bug I mentioned where things don't learn moves when they evolve, and Glalie learns Freeze Dry at 42 on Evolution. That bug was actually fixed in a June 4th update, but I don't know how long it'll take to have that on the server. Well, crap. And I can't use Articuno even if I had one. So moving on to the breeding options, Delibird isn't exactly the greatest, and Mamoswine is badass, but being weak to water and grass, it didn't seem like the best option. So finally, Lapras, which is great with the high base stats, and that water absorb is cool for a water gym, but I was originally avoiding it because it is complicated as balls to get freeze dry on it. I need to navigate through a bunch of overlapping egg groups. I needed to catch a Smeargle first. If it isn't male, I can breed to get a male one. Then sketch the freeze dry in a battle, which implies training a cryogonal to 50. 
trading it to someone, training the Smeargle up to live the freeze dry, then I can sketch freeze dry in a battle, then breed it onto a male deli bird, then breed that down with a female Lapras, then keep breeding the Lapras until I get one I want to use with a decent nature. That all seemed like an unnecessary headache, but it quickly became a necessary headache because I really wanted freeze dry. And Lapras is weak to that Ludicolo's Giga Drains, which is unfortunate, and I'm weak to a Lantern's Electric Moves. I am expecting a Volt Absorb Lantern too, that's a great Electric type check. That's where Glalie would have been nice, but Lapras is much more bulky, so it's fine. I just have to do it. I've been random teleporting around, and I actually landed in somebody's Mesa biome, finally. They even flattened it out a bit, isn't that cool? Now, I don't have any more homes I can set, so I can't leave. I will basically just hang out here until I find a Smeargle, which could be days. Oh my god, there one is. You have no idea how many day and night cycles have passed here in the game, not in real life. <laughs> it's a 1% spawn, please just get caught. Oh yeah, and my team is all dead because I killed a Megazard Y boss here and have no way to heal. The servers are kind of slow right now and there is a bug where when you throw a Pokeball sometimes it just leaves you stuck on the waiting screen forever. Please no. Okay. No, I'm not giving up on this Smeargle, I'm gonna try to coordinate something here, get another player on to teleport to me and keep the area loaded so that when I go to the hub and back to get unstuck, the Smeargle does not despawn. It worked! I am unstuck and back. Smeargle is still here. I actually used the same technique once before to catch a shiny Shuckle that spawned in the extreme hills above my house. Sadly, I lost that footage, but I do have the Shuckle to show for it. Well, now I have that player here. I have a safety net if this bug happens again. I can keep trying to catch this asshole. Uh, he better not struggle kill himself because he didn't sketch a move. We escaped, thank god. What is your catch rate? Seriously! This is insane! I have ran and re-encountered this asshole maybe 15 times now. You can see I can't just spam Pokeballs because the server's kind of laggy right now, as we know. Yes, thank you, the Smeargle ordeal is over. We can breed as many as we want now with Ditto, sketch all the moves we want. Goodbye Mesa, we're done. The plan moves on. Now I just need to learn Freeze Dry with Cryogonal, sketch that onto Smeargle in a battle, breed that onto Delibird, catch a female Lapras, breed the Freeze Dry Delibird with the female Lapras, hatch that Freeze Dry Lapras, and now as an egg move it'll get passed down no matter what I breed it with. And guess what? It is in the Water 1 egg group, same as Dratini. How about we get ourselves a Water Absorb Decent IV Freeze Dry Lapras, and this will finally all be over. Yeah, I forgot my Dratinis have a bunch of egg moves. I didn't mean to pass down Iron Tail and Dragon Dance. That's cool, I guess, but I'm not building a physical Lapras. Hi there! I've got just the thing for you, buddy. Haha! -ha! Yeah, you can see I'm flattening out the area to the left there. This is all just above my cave. Whenever I'm waiting on breeding to happen, I just start digging up here as a busy work project. When it's all flat, it's easier to see things that spawn, like Larvitar spawn at night, which drop emeralds. Very good way to make some extra money. And there are always bosses and shinies and all that to look out for. Um, speaking of shinies, I think the last clip I recorded I mentioned finding shinies here. Would you take a look at this pink Loudred? Hmm, weird. They're usually a pretty dark bluish purple. We found ourselves a second shiny in this area, the first being the Shuckle, for which the recording failed. Please just let me catch this thing without needing to get somebody near me to load the area. Yeah, we got him. A shiny Loudred. Pretty sweet if you ask me. Modest? He's modest, dude. Wow. I mean, I'm sure the IVs aren't anything crazy, but are you kidding? Modest, shiny x -Cloud? That is power. Hey, uh, you know in those comment to gym suggestions, if you want to tell me to use this guy, that'd be cool. Just saying. Oh, and there's a boss over here. This is 15 seconds later. I didn't even stop that recording. Well, I can add him to the shiny collection. I have continued to buy these guys off the auction sometimes, and the collection is growing. I got the Shuckle and the Loudra, the other ones are purchased. I don't want to talk about that goddamn Mime Jr. I tried to buy a 5 IV Mon for around 5k, pretty normal. I saw it in the chat, then this Mime auction popped up right after, pushed the chat up, and I misclicked to bid on it instead for 10k. Shinies usually go for like 2 to 4k. Of course nobody else ever bid on it, so I bought it. Now I didn't just get scammed, the reason it was 10k is that it actually has 3 perfect IVs, which is very rare to have on a shiny, it was obviously from breeding. But it's a Mime Junior, and it gets exponentially worse when you realize this is a Mime Junior above level 15 without Mimic. It learns Mimic at level 15 only, and you need that move to evolve it into Mr. Meme. So I paid 10k for this damn 3 IV shiny Mime Junior that can never evolve. Whatever, I do think it's pretty funny to be stuck with this thing. 
I'm breeding for a female Chimchar over there. That's part of the road to Thunder Punch Mill Tank. But I've been breeding this Lapras for a while, and I have quite a few now that are okay. Uh, over here, these Water Absorb ones on the left are the ones I considered using. I finally have one I'm happy with, though, this one here. The Perfect HP, Defense, and Special Attack. Those are a few of the most important stats for me. He already knows all the moves just from being trained to 16. So the toughest member of the team is done and ready to be EV trained. Here are all the 5 IVs I have now, all of them with a bad attack stat. Most importantly, a male and female 5 IV Sceptile trained up to know all the moves I need to pass down. I'll just keep breeding these two together until I get a timid one to use in the gym. Now for a tiny bit on Metagross, I really will be using Metagross, like I said it was a good suggestion, and I wanted to do it mainly because a while ago I was crazy lucky to get someone's level 1 Beldum off Wonder Trade, which is just the random trading thing. This guy here, Beldum, is pretty hard to find already, it is rare, and at level 1 this one is obviously a breeding reject, so I knew it wouldn't be perfect. I thought it might have some okay IVs though, and it actually did, god damn, look at that. They obviously rejected it because of that horrible attack. But look at those other stats, three perfect IVs. I did want to breed it a bit with the Destiny Knot and my crappy Ditto to see if I could get one with at least a good randomly generated attack stat. And after three attempts, I actually did. This one had the perfect defense carryover, but it got a great attack IV. You can see them all there. I can't tell if it's 30 or 31 attack. It makes no difference at level 45. And yeah, it is a shame that a lot of those other stats fell apart, but the special attack doesn't matter and the speed isn't huge. I think it was worth it for that attack. I really want to be punching through things and I didn't need all the stats to be perfect because I don't expect to be using this guy forever after the gym. Like I'll be forgetting a bunch of good moves on level up like Meteor Mash that would have been nice to have if I was making a Metagross to use outside of the water gym. Might use it for a future gym though. Anyway, this will do just fine. Getting that Beldum off Wonder Trade was really valuable because it is genderless, it can only breed with Ditto, making it really hard to get one with any perfect IVs in this game. A Ditto with perfect IVs will sell for crazy amounts, so a very lucky trade. After all these rejects, I finally got a Timid Trico. Turns out it was 4 IV, missing attack of course, and missing HP, which is no big deal. I could ever stone him to pass down the Timid nature and keep going for perfect HP. But I don't need a 5 IV for the gym, let's use this guy. Time to train him up, we are 3 out of 4 on the gym team. Uh, so, big news. I finally got the mill tank I wanted with Thunder Punch, and I actually trained everything all the way up. Everything is EV trained, I was getting ready to go when they dropped Pixelmon 5.1.1 on the server. That's the update that adds many things, one thing being the fix to the evolution level up move learning bug I've complained about many times. That means the Lapras struggle was avoidable, I could have used freeze dry Glalie, but I'm happy with Lapras, that's fine. However, there was a Miltank struggle I did not document to get Thunder Punch on Miltank. It would have been very easy to breed it with Ampharos, which learns Thunder Punch when it evolves, and also learns Thunder Wave, which is awesome, I wanted a status move on there, and they're both in the field egg group, easy peasy. Instead, I had to get a Hitmonchan, learn Thunder Punch, get a female Chimchar, which took a really long time, breed those to get Thunder Punch on a male Chimchar, and then breed that onto a mill tank. And in the end, after all that, I didn't even get any other useful move like Toxic or Thunder Wave or Earthquake or whatever. That was all just to get Thunder Punch. But now, with that evolution move learning bug fixed, so many things are possible, and I think I will rebreed a mill tank with Thunder Wave because it's so easy to do with Ampharos. So just a little bit of wasted time there, but I want Thunder Wave. After this, I will be ready to take on the gym. Okay, the mill tank is all sorted out and ready to go. I always think I should do this team breakdown faster or skip it entirely because you'd have to be quite the Pokemon fan to find all this theory crafting interesting. But that's why I offer the timestamp every time for people to go straight to the battle. Well, let's go through what I'm bringing to the gym. Here's Lapras, you already know the story. I wanted Freeze Dry. And yeah, just now the evolution move learning bug was fixed, so I could have just used Glalie. The update also comes with tons of cool stuff though, like new Pokemon, berry trees. Anyway, I'm not changing the team to go for Glalie or anything. Lapras is really good. I wonder if other people have brought Freeze Dry to the water gym, knowing how annoying it was to acquire it until right now. The leader might be expecting it when I send out a Lapras, but who knows, maybe I just have Thunderbolt on there and I brought Lapras for the water absorb and to check water ice types. I do wish I had Thunderbolt on here for that exact purpose, but that's difficult to acquire. I have this thing here for Freeze Dry and Freeze Dry only. Never Melt Ice boosted too. Ice Shard is on there because it learned it and I don't need anything else. Even though I'm lowering my attack.
attack. That's okay. Priority is always nice. Maybe they have a Focus Sash Ludicolo. Who knows? And Confuse, right? I learned that too. I don't expect that to be the best play. I don't intend to lean on Confusion hacks to win. A max HP, max attack, of course. Calm Nature to boost my special defense. The Deli Bird I caught was calm, so I figured passing that down would be better than spending ages fishing for Modest or something. And Calm is very good. That allows me to guaranteed live a max roll Sniper Crit Draco Meteor from Kingdra if I'm at full. It does 82 to 98 and I can Oko with Freeze Dry, so that's cool. On top of that, it does make sense to increase your highest base stat with your nature. Because of the way it works, it's a 10% bonus. You can see 95 speed F is my highest stat. Natures don't affect HP. So Calm is great for Lapras, or careful I suppose if you want to build a physical attacker, because you can definitely do both. Speaking of physical, Dragon Dance is on there, because it's a cool move I accidentally passed down from Dratini. I'll never use it, there's no reason to, when I'm very slow and a special attacker. I would get Thunderbolt if I could. Cool, that's Lapras. Moving on to Sceptile, which I thought would be a fun grass type to use to get some speed on my team. Not like it's the best possible grass type, but we are here to click Miracle Seed Boosted Giga Drain and do some massive damage to some things. Leaf Storm is there if I need more damage, it will straight up kill most things. It's just barely a guaranteed kill on some fat water ice types like Wall Rain that I'm scared of, don't want to be taking ice moves. Detect is there because it learns it, maybe I can scout out a move, see what they go for. And Quick Attack is just more priority. Basically all of my sets end up having some priority move on there, even if it's out of place because getting the other moves I want is too costly so might as well have quick attack I guess maybe to kill a sturdy shell smashed Caracosta how about that scenario well I am prepared like I would have loved Dragon Pulse on here to hit that Kingdra but Leaf Storm does do more anyway it just drops a special attack my EV spread is kind of weird here for the first time and it is that way for a reason the only water type in the game with a higher base speed than me is Greninja so I have just enough investment to speed creep timid Greninja I'm timid myself but if they're max speed, there's no way I was outspeeding anyway, so whatever. If they outspeed though, I can live a modest max special attack Ice Beam and kill it with Giga Drain because Protein is banned. I doubt I'd live a Gunk Shot though. I also outspeed max speed Jolly Kingdra, same for Cloyster, which is a huge threat for the team. I have to watch out for D-Dance Kingdra though, anything boosted by Swift Swim. Uh, speed boost Sharpedo, but that might be banned. Maybe just Blaziken is banned, I'm not sure. Same for Shell Smash Caracosta, too fast for me. And if that Cloyster Shell Smashes, oh boy, I need the rest of the team to deal with that thing. That's another thing I really wish I had Thunderbolt on my Lapras for to hit it on the special side if it comes in on Lapras. But even neutral Freeze Dry does like 88 to 104, it can kill. But if they're already set up with plus two attack, I can't switch into Lapras, I will die to Rock Blast. I need to handle it with the rest of my team. Mainly Metagross is a hard counter. Despite the crazy defense on Cloyster, well, my Metagross has crazy attack, and it is possible to two kill with Thunder Punch. Back to Sceptile, of course max special attack on this thing, and some investment in defenses, which is kinda weird for Sceptile. You usually don't think bulky when you see Sceptile, but I have enough to live an Ice Beam from pretty much anything I think they're able to have in the Water Gym, even Stab Ice Beam from Wall Rain, which is the highest special attack Water Ice type, and usually you just go max HP and not summon both defenses, but because I'm running a draining move like Giga Drain, it makes sense to invest in split defense. That's just the way it works with the health you get back from a draining move, it'll heal me up more percentage-wise because my HP is lower. I won't get into all that though. We should move on to Metagross, suggested in a comment by Elwaj? Loaj? That's not a word. Anyway, the wheel didn't pick it, but I did, because why not? It's very powerful, and we're finally at a gym where the level cap allows use of a pseudo-legendary level 45 for Metagross. I went back and forth on the item. I didn't have an Assault Vest, otherwise I would have went super especially bulky. I had a Rocky Helmet and some other stuff, like maybe just a Magnet to power up the Thunder Punch, but I just gave it a Lumberry. If I get burned, like if they have Scald on half their team and burn me, that'll heal off the burn, which could come in handy. I don't want my attack cut in half, or God forbid I get Ice Beam Frozen or something. Don't have to worry about any of that. Adamant Max HP, Max Attack, straightforward stuff. I plan to teach it a couple TMs, Thunder Punch and Power Up Punch. Thunder Punch will hit nearly everything for good damage. Power Up Punch might be fun to get a plus one in attack. Zen Headbutt is great if I need to hit a Lantern or anything immune or even neutral to electric. And Bullet Punch, once again the last move slot is just for some not so useful priority move. I mean Bullet Punch is normally a great move, especially stab and coming off that attack stat, but we're in a water gym where it's guaranteed to be resisted or maybe neutral on a water rock or something. But those 30s and sashes are always a thing, so Bullet Punch could be clutch. 
Finally, the random Wheel of Comments team member suggested by Dan, Miltank. I thought I'd be handicapped by this fun wheel idea when I came up with it, but not this time. Miltank is very usable. Thick Fats helped me with those ice types. Metagross helps with that too. Lapras can help defensively, but can't hit back too well. We're just fully invested in our defenses. Impish with max HP, max Spadef. I want to take hits and stay alive longer. Leftovers will help, combined with Milk Drink to heal off damage if we get the chance. No Toxic on there, though. I won't be Milk Drink stalling anyone. Just have the Thunder Punch bred on there and the Thunder Wave that I got last second. Some speed control is nice, and the Body Slam is a good stab move with 30% chance to paralyze. Very nice. I think we can switch into an Ice move or something and put in some work with Miltank. That is our team. Of course, I considered many others. I don't even have an electric type, just some electric coverage moves, which is a little weird. I was looking at having a Lantern or a Ludicolo of my own. Maybe Jolteon. Uh, that Pikachu would have been funny if that was chosen. But I ended up leaving Lantern when I realized I wouldn't be able to teach it Volt Switch without going broke. Those TMs should really be cheaper, man. They're one-time use and everything. That should be okay, though. I'm happy with this team. Should be fun. Flying up on Gym 3, the first time we don't have a Skarmory to carry us into the gym. Let's see how many of our plans actually succeed, and how many completely fail. That's the way this planning thing works. Being prepared for everything means a lot of what you plan for won't happen at all. Hopefully Freeze Dry can put in some work, and we'll try to use Miltank too. I don't want it to just sit in the back. Depending on the lead, I may just lead Miltank, unless it's something quad weak to Freeze Dry. I don't want to allow a Kingdra to set up, but then again, I can T-Wave it. I'm getting in my head with all these possible scenarios. There's no reason to plan anymore. We will see the lead momentarily. There's nobody battling right now, so we are first in line. Just need a leader to accept the challenge. They may also be battling in a different gym. That is possible. There are dozens of gym leaders, and they all cover multiple gyms. That's the only way you can have all these gyms open so often. They're in the arena, preparing things. Aha! Teleported in! It is time! Hate to rain on your parade, but you've been dealt a bad hand. Try to keep your head above water. How many puns can we fit into one sentence? Yep, I am ready to go. Let's see what this lead matchup is here. Tentacruel, alright. So, Metagross is a pretty hard counter to this thing. It's uh, more especially defensive, probably there for grass types. Pretty quick too, though. So let's lead with Miltank. I want to make sure I actually use it in this battle. And we can Thunder Wave at first turn to slow it right down. See what it wants to do to me. Reflect type, interesting bring. Get rid of the water typing, okay. Well, you are paralyzed now, so I can just hit you with some moves, see what you want to do. Actually, why did I do that? Body Slime would be better. I just commented on the fact that it is a normal type. And, uh, interesting, so it's stacking some toxic spikes around me. We should be able to deal with that, though, and Metagross won't be affected. Now it's going for a Sludge Wave, gets the poison. Alright. Uh, so we could keep hitting it, or we could make the pro play into Metagross. Immune to the Sludge Wave, not gonna get poisoned by those spikes, but it gets fully paralyzed anyway. Okay. Did, did I bring the wrong Metagross? Oh no. No, I just didn't teach it the TMs again. Oh my god, I'm such an idiot. Ah, well, we'll Zen Headbutt. That should be cleaned up completely. It's not very physically defensive. We are a strong-ass Metagross. You don't need to be a poison type. Greninja. Um, I did not expect to actually see this in this gym. Uh, well, I think I have to go to Miltank here. You're gonna have to take this, bud. Uh, you should take one, obviously. Very specially defensive, but I don't think you're gonna take two. I'm expecting the Dark Pulse here. Metagross was not gonna live that in any universe. And I didn't want to risk Sceptile or Lapras. Both of them handled Greninja pretty well. Sceptile's kind of built for this scenario. Dark Pulse, there it is. It's a Life Orb Greninja. Um, yeah, Miltek, sorry bud, you're going down here. I'm not switching anything in. Surf, okay, so we learned a bit more about his moveset. Rip Miltank, you will be missed. I couldn't risk the health of anything else. Going into Lapras there to get the Water Absorb would have been insane, but he had no reason not to just Dark Pulse again to finish me off. So now I have a Lapras that can definitely take a hit and freeze dry, or I have a Sceptile which is designed with Greninja in mind. I might outspeed if he's not invested, and I should live a max special attack modest Ice Beam. Actually with the Life Orb I think it's a roll, but heavily in my favor. Or we may do none of those things because we appear to be stuck. One second. Yeah, it looks like we were stuck. Apparently the protocol for this is to just exit the battle, not heal. And uh, I think they're going to throw out their Greninja again. Yeah, and I'll just basically choose what I need to switch into. Which I will. I will go with Sceptile. This should be interesting. Yeah, they got rid of their uh, Tentacruel since that died. Uh, I didn't get rid of Miltank, but it is still fainted. So, uh, okay. I'm going to go for the Gig Drain here, which will kill. I should live an Ice Beam. Please don't have Gunk Shot, because I don't think I'm living that. Ice Beam! We live it on 8! Oh my god, the special defense investment is perfect, the perfect Spadef IV, it all came together. Some plans work out in the end, Septile, you monster. 
Uh, okay, Cloyster, a huge, huge threat, but I'm glad we're in here with Sceptile and not with Lapras. We have to Giga Drain. I won't let it set up on me. This will easily kill, unless it has a Sash, and it looks like it actually does. It goes for the Shell Smash. Uh, one of my fears, but guess what? We are prepared for this exact situation. Sturdy Caracosta, Sash Cloyster, same thing to me. Quick attack this thing for me. Get it out of my face. That could have been bad right there. And the last one is actually Whiskash. Uh, I know I can put Giga Drain and win, but I don't, I don't want to be an ass, but we didn't use Freeze Dry at all. Please just let me have this. I want to use Freeze Dry. I actually went for Bounce. Um, I don't know if we're faster. I guess it doesn't matter either way. Let's D-Dance for the lulls. Uh, we were actually slower, so we could have Freeze Dried that turn, but now we're definitely faster. Freeze Dry will clean up, and we will take the win. The Cascade Badge is ours. Three gems deep now, still undefeated. But that is really not a crazy accomplishment, because come on, they're limited to a single type, and I can prepare out the ass to take it on. Dual-type gems are coming next, though. Eventually, we may lose one of these, and that's really not a big deal at all. <laughs> like, I build these up a lot, because I find that fun. But if you lose, I think you just have a two-hour cooldown, and you can try again. But anyway, yay, we did it. I'm glad that some of our plans came to fruition. Septile really put in the work. That was perfectly built with the 31 Spid FIV and the right amount of investment. That's kind of wild. I didn't expect to actually see a Greninja. I am surprised there was no Ludicolo or Kingdra. I guess Tentacruel was the only specially defensive Grass-type answer. Good thing we dealt with that early for Septile to run wild. Cloyster, I guess, was the physically defensive Grass-type counter. And if I didn't have a special attacker in on that thing with the priority quick attack too, it would have been a huge threat. Without quick attack, it would have killed me for sure. Metagross would have had to come in to deal with it. And with a few Zen headbutts, maybe I could have killed it. But that would have gotten really rough with no Thunder Punch on there too. Good thing that fail didn't come back to bite me. Or if I sent out Lapras instead of the Sceptile to kill the Greninja, then Cloyster would have came in, it would have gotten the Shell Smash off and killed Lapras with a Rock Blast. Many scenarios where that would have gotten pretty rocky. And there was no Rain Dance shenanigans, no Lantern or Caracosta, no Swift Swim. But I bet there is a gym leader who does use all those things. Like I said before, there are many gym leaders who fill in for each other and they all have different teams to be unpredictable. Obviously you can't expect one person to be on the server taking challenges all day every day with the same team. But we dealt with the threats accordingly, that went well. I'm sorry Miltank that you were death fodder there. Sceptile needed to be at full HP and Metagross couldn't stay in. Lapras maybe could have taken two and freeze dried, but that was kind of my secret win condition in the back. I knew if I had Lapras in the back I was in good shape to revenge kill pretty much anything. That was a good safety net. I didn't want to lose to a Dark Pulse flinch. I'm sorry I didn't teach Metagross the TMs. I feel like such an asshole doing that twice now. But on the bright side, maybe we can use Metagross for another gym and I can teach him a couple TMs that'll be more appropriate for that gym. Speaking of, remember you can comment a suggestion for the electric flying type gym. Good or bad, helpful or garbage, go for it. And now that it's a 5v5, even though I get stuck with something kind of trash, I think we should be okay. I'll wrap up the episode there. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you next time.